good morning and welcome to another edition of you news. news where you can be the reporter make sure to send those reports in today what are our top stories today's top stories are a man was sent to federal prison for impersonating a super bowl player a woman is saved from kidnapper by casey's employee man correctly predicts the date of queen elizabeth's death next he warns of King Charles III and a special interview or special report by Sea America Projects. All right, well, let's get right into it. Our first story is about the prediction of the Queen's death that came to pass. A Twitter user posted in July claiming that the Queen would pass away on September 8th, which came to be, while also noting a prediction relating to the new king in a tweet that has gone viral. A man who apparently predicted the date of Queen Elizabeth II's death has also given a warning over the new King Charles III. Logan Smith initially posted on Twitter back in July that the UK's longest serving monarch would die on September 8th, 2022. The specific date sadly became true when the Queen passed away peacefully last Thursday in Balmoral while surrounded by royal family members, including King Charles and Princess Anne. Smith's tweet has now gone viral, reports the Daily Star, after he also claimed in the same post that King Charles would die on March 28th, 2026. Hmm, we better write that down. <laughs> the Twitter account has since been suspended. I didn't know it was illegal to make predictions, but then again... England doesn't have the guarantee of free speech that we enjoy here. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm sure that King Charles is the most interested in that story <laughs> to see if it'll come true. So imagine being thrown into federal prison for three years. You must have done something atrocious, right? Well, this guy did. He sold legitimate Super Bowl rings. Scott Spina a New Jersey man posed as a former New England Patriots player in order to buy and sell Super Bowl rings that he claimed were gifts to Tom Brady's family. In 2017, Spina bought a Patriots 2016 Super Bowl championship ring from a Patriots player who then left the team. Prosecutors said Spina paid the player identified only as TJ with at least one bad check and sold the ring for $63,000 to an Orange County broker of championship rings. When Spina obtained the player ring, he also received the information that allowed the former player to purchase Super Bowl rings for family and friends that are slightly smaller than the player rings. Of course, they'd have to make them smaller. <laughs> Their hands are probably ginormous. The U.S. Attorney Office said in a statement, Spina then called the company that made the rings, claimed to be the former player, and ordered three family and friend rings with Brady engraved on them, claiming they were gifts for Brady's baby, prosecutor said. Spina sold the rings to an auction house for $100,000, more than he paid for them. One of them sold for more than $337,000, authority said. In 2022, Spina pled guilty to one count of mail fraud, three counts of wire fraud, and one count of aggravated identity theft for posing as the former Patriots player, falsely telling the broker that the family rings were ordered by Brady and defrauding him in connection with three wire transfers for the deposit. At his sentencing, the judge also ordered Spina to pay $63,000 in restitution to the former Patriots player who sold him the genuine Super Bowl ring. So who knows how long this guy could have gone away with this if he just paid the people <laughs> with legitimate cash <laughs> instead of trying to steal from them. Yeah, what a way to go to prison. <laughs> creative way to try to make some money I must say I would have never thought of doing that <laughs> okay next we uh, go to the upper midwest where a woman was abducted by a stranger and sought help at a convenience store employees at a Minnesota convenience store are being credited with foiling 
a kidnapping after police say a woman was taken by a stranger. Police say a woman in her mid-30s entered Casey's General Store in Cannon Falls, Minnesota around 11 a.m. Saturday. She told employees she had just escaped after she was abducted by a man in the Twin Cities. Shortly after, Casey's employees helped the woman. Responding officers found the suspect and a chase ensued. At one point, the suspect crashed into a pursuing squad car. He was originally arrested in Faribault. The victim says she got into the suspect's vehicle in downtown Minneapolis, expecting him to drive her to a different location. Instead, she says he drove her around the metro area and would not let her go. Hmm. Casey's employees also said that the woman and her mother later came back to thank them for helping her get away. Eh, that's scary. Scary story, but a happy ending, and thanks to those brave Casey's employees. And for those of you on the West Coast, Casey's is basically the 7-Eleven of the Midwest. They're everywhere, and that's they're right. awesome. Yeah, And they have really them. tasty pizza that is beloved by all up and down the Midwest, especially... The breakfast, the breakfast pizza. pizza. We've yet it's, to try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fav- People swear by it. <laughs> All right. And now we go to a special report from Sea America Projects. Thanks. This is Corrine from Sea America Projects. And I want to let you know that right now the Kansas State Fair is going on. It started on Friday. It'll run for 10 days. And it's down in Hutchinson, Kansas. So if you can make it there, be sure and do so. We will try to do that as well. We have to get our fried foods on a stick. And then other news and local news for Sea America Projects, we just hit 5,000 subscribers. We're so excited. And not only did we hit that, we're almost at 2 million views for our channel. It took a long time for us to get there, however, we had to do this over a period of nine years to get to 5,000 subscribers, but we're really excited. We know that the growth will only go from there. It'll only speed up from there. And we're just really excited to share all these fun projects that we do with you, the viewer. Here is an example of one of the projects completed on the channel right here. This was used to be just an ordinary metal cabinet that my husband redid and repainted into this fabulous looking shelving unit. Back to you, Corn Fed. Thanks for that report. That is very awesome and we congratulate you on this uh, wonderful achievement. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us yet again and stay tuned for another episode of You News. God bless and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.